Welcome. In 2014, 11 out of 12 months in the Netherlands were warmer than the average from 1981 to 2010. Could this have happened by coincidence? Or does this mean that the climate in the Netherlands has become warmer? To answer questions like these, you can use the statistical technique of hypothesis testing. The first step in hypothesis testing is to be precise in what the hypothesis is you are testing. In this case, we want to consider the two possibilities. The climate in the Netherlands in 2014 was identical to that over the period 1981 to 2010 versus the climate in the Netherlands in 2014 was warmer than that over the period 1981 to 2010. We need to formulate this explicitly enough that we can test it in an experiment. Formally, we do this by creating a so-called null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. Let's say a month in 2014 is warm if it is warmer than the average for that month in 1981 to 2010. In this case, we'll take as null hypothesis A0 the statement that the probability that a month is warm equals one half. The null hypothesis should always correspond to a default. Nothing special is happening here. The alternative hypothesis, H1, is the statement that the probability of a warm month is more than one half. If we can conclude that H1 is true, then we truly have shown something remarkable. Technically, you should formulate H0 in such a way that you can calculate probabilities assuming H0 is true. In this case, we have to add the assumption that the probabilities that different months are warm are independent of each other. Then we can calculate the probability that our observation of 11 out of 12 months are warm would occur if H0 were true. After formulating our hypothesis, we perform our experiment. We have to do the experiment after formulating the hypothesis. Even random data always satisfies some peculiar pattern and we, human beings, are conditioned to look for such patterns. If we first look at the data, you might identify a pattern that exists only by chance. If you then test for this pattern, which you already saw in the data, and subsequently prove it is there, you have just proven that you are not blind. You have not shown that the pattern is an intrinsic feature of the experiment you performed. In this case, we looked at the data first, so we are in trouble. We will just pretend we formulated this hypothesis before 2014. As there are quite a few scientists who claim that the Earth is warming up, it would not have been so strange to pretend this. After performing the experiment, you have to check whether the results are sufficient to reject H0 and assume H1 is true instead. Here, we truly take H0 to be the default position. If the results obtained could have happened with reasonable probability, assuming H0 is true, then we do not reject H0. Only if the results are so outlandish that the odds of them happening if H0 were true are very, very small, then we reject H0 and conclude that H1 is likely valid. In this case, evidence for H1 consists of many warm months. Thus, we would make a rule saying, if there are at least X warm months in 2014, then we reject H0, otherwise we do not reject H0. Here X is some number, which should have been determined before doing the experiment. Are nine more months already sufficient? Or would you like to see at least 10 or even 11? In class, you will learn how you can determine X. 
and you will see that there is no unique best choice. Of course, we can make errors while making a test. Since we are dealing with probabilities, it is impossible to be absolutely certain of the outcome we find. There are two options for our outcome. We either reject H0 or we don't. And there are two options for what is really true. Either H0 is true or H1 is true. Together, this gives 2 times 2 equals 4 options, which we can conveniently depict in a table as on the slide. If we are in the upper right or the lower left corner, then we are happy because our result corresponds to the true world. In the other two corners, we have made a mistake. A type 1 error occurs if H0 is true, but we reject it. This would mean that the climate in 2014 is equal to before, but we conclude that it is warmer. A type 2 error happens if we do not reject H0 while H1 is true. This is the case if the climate in 2014 is warmer than before, but we think the data is not convincing enough to conclude that. It has we do not reject the hypothesis that the climate is the same. The goal of a rule determining whether or not to reject H0 is to minimize these two types of errors. But there's a trade-off. Recall that X is the cutoff, the number of warm months needed to reject H0. We choose a low value for X, we reject H0 more often. So the chance of an error of type 2 goes down, but the chance of an error of type 1 goes up. On the other hand, if you choose a high value of x, you will make fewer errors of type 1, but more of type 2. There are no absolute rules what choice you should make, and you should always consider the consequences of an error. Raising dikes if the sea level does not rise is unnecessarily costly, but not raising the dikes while the sea level does increase could cost thousands of lives and would be worse. Before class, you should consider the following question. Suppose you went to a party and had a few too many beers. On the way back, the police stops you for a breathalyzer test, checking whether you had too much to drink. The test shows you are fine and you can continue to drive home. What are the hypotheses H0 and H1 the police uses in this test? And what type of error did they make? See you in class.